Hello guys, I am Dev Tigris, and this is JavaScript HTML5 Game Development Tutorial Part 4. On the screen right now, you're seeing a demonstration of a tile engine that we're going to be building from scratch. There's simply too much going on in this demo, and we're not going to be able to cover everything in just this one tutorial. But the first thing we need to determine is the starting point of our code. And in this part, we'll be actually writing HTML5 and JavaScript code to accomplish that. This is the first tutorial in the series that serves as a starting point for building an entire 2D game engine from scratch. The first thing we want to do is to add different components to our game engine. Each component is simply a separate JavaScript file. This is a canvas-based game engine, so one of the first components we want to add is the canvas. We do it by using the script tag, canvas.js. I will also create a blank canvas.js file. I will populate the canvas.js uh, with actual canvas initializing process. But for now, let's just create a couple more components. One for sprite, because sprites will be rendered as the tiles in the world. and the next one we want to add is the world.js, which will contain our tile map world representation. Now I'm actually going to go into the root folder of my project and create the files that I just referenced in the code. One for canvas and one for sprite. and the final one for world.js. So now we have these neat little placeholders for different components. And I'm also gonna open them in the editor one by one, just so we have a starting point. And every time I reference a JS file, I simply will go here on top of the navigation bar in my editor. I also downloaded jQuery and I'm going to copy and paste it here. Now jQuery is not going to be used a lot for actual game development, but we still need to add it. The order in which components are included matters. So I'm going to go ahead and move jQuery to be number one include file. I'm doing it because this way it becomes visible to all include files added after it. This principle also applies to all JavaScript include files. So for example, we needed to include canvas first so that Sprite and the world can use it. And we needed to include Sprite first so that the world can use it. PHP Storm has been alerting me for about three minutes now that there's something wrong with these includes. And it's saying empty tag doesn't work in some browsers. And I tested that in Chrome, that appears to be true. So the solution to that is simply to close the script tag with, with the type attribute. So in just under five minutes, we'll have a good starting point here. In the next step, I'm actually going to add the canvas tag. Let's name it this time game because it will represent our game view. Now I'm gonna open canvas.js file and paste some of the code from one of my previous tutorials. It's not exactly the same and I changed a few things around here but the point is, this is the main object that will help us initialize context. 
Now I'm going back to our original file and I'm going to start initializing context. First, I'm going to create a variable named context and set it to null. At this point, we need to determine when the HTML page has finished loading. And this is done using the jQuery's document ready construct that looks like this. It takes a nameless JavaScript function. And the code that will go here will be triggered once the page has fully finished loading. Now is a good time to initialize context. So I'll use context variable name. And let's go for a second to canvas.js. The name of our object is HTML, and it has a constructor function that takes three parameters, canvas ID, width, and height. So let's go ahead and create that object, new HTML, and let's use its constructor function. Game is our canvas ID, so we use that here. And supply it with some 460 by 80 resolution for a start. I'll open this page in the browser now. And here we see that we actually initialized Canvas. Now I'm going to go into Sprite.js file, which is blank right now. And I'm going to paste the Sprite object from one of my previous tutorials. Now, one thing to notice here is that some of the functions use the context object that we just created a minute ago. And another thing is that the draw function of the sprite class, it uses um, block W and block H. This is the width and height of a tile that we're going to draw. So in this way, the draw function is specialized specifically for drawing square tiles. Now let's determine these two values as global variables back in our main file. Block W is 32 pixels. Block H is 32 pixels. Now I'm going to bring two sprites into this project that I previously created in Photoshop. These are 32 by 32 pictures of a brick wall and some water. And now I'll use the sprite object to load each one of them individually. I'll name my first sprite wall. And again, I need to use the new keyword, this time with the sprite object. And the file was PNG. And in the same way, I'll create water sprite. So now we have two sprites loaded up into our engine. Because images are traditionally taking up more bandwidth than your regular HTML elements, we need to wait for them in another function. We can use jQuery to wait for the window load event. And it works exactly the same way as we did with the document ready. This is done this way because if you start drawing sprites right here in the document ready function, they may or may not work because chances are they're probably still loading because the images take a little time to load. To start drawing sprites using our sprite object, we need to first reference them by their name. So if you want to draw a wall sprite, type in a wall dot draw. This will call its member function draw. And you specify x, y position on the screen on the canvas. Upper left corner is zero, zero. And now I'll refresh the browser on this code and we'll see that there's a tile that's now being displayed. Also notice that at the bottom in the console, it's saying loaded sprite wall PNG and water PNG. That's generated by the sprite object 
located in sprite.js file. To draw another tile, you would do it in exactly the same way. Water, draw, and this time we'll move it 32 pixels to the right. And I'll save this and let's see what happens in the browser. Now, as you can see, now I have two different tiles. Obviously, this is not a process you want to do by hand. For this reason, we'll put some tiles through a couple of for loops. Let's create a for loop for for a y variable y minus 10 y plus plus and we'll do the same thing for x axis and now here inside our double for loop we'll actually start drawing some tiles now this x and y coordinate gives us our position in the tile world on the tile map of that particular sprite but in order to identify it with precision we actually need to multiply it by the width or height of that sprite this will give us a grid of tiles 10 by 10 we still need to determine the actual tile position on the grid and that is done by creating a secondary set of coordinates for a tile x it's x times width and for tile y it's y times blocks height so having done this we're ready to start drawing our tiles I'll take the wall sprite and draw it at this new position tile x tile y now let's refresh the browser to see the result Now, to make this a little more exciting, we can use JavaScript's random function to randomize between two different tiles. Random times two, this will give us a number between zero and one, or zero and two or so. But we need to use another mathematics library function, and it's the floor function so we need to wrap this random number which is generated with the math floor this will give us the lowest number um, because math random returns a floating point number converting it to a floor this will give us the lowest integer so for example if all of this equals zero display wall but in some cases it will give us a one so when it gives us one let's draw a water tile and let's save this and refresh the browser I just pressed F5 and of course each time the page is refreshed we get a different design looks like we've come to the end of JavaScript HTML5 game development tutorial part 4. In the next part I'll cover how to build a tile map editor. So I hope to see you there guys and thanks for watching.